Hello, hello everyone. My name is math coach Jenny Gardner and I'm an academic coach here at SNHU. Welcome to this guide on the what and why of statistics. Today we are going to talk about what statistics is, why do I need to learn this, and now what? So a lot of times, before we even jump into any of the subjects, a lot of times this might be a prerequisite class or something that you are forced to take for your program and you're wondering why you need to learn statistics and what it is. So that's what this video is all about. Other times you have chosen statistics because you're interested in it and you want to know what you can do with it. So we're going to talk about all of that today. So there are a lot of different branches of statistics. We're going to talk about two of them. First is inferential statistics. That means that you're making inferences. So we're going to start at the bottom. Because statistics is like a building block of information or a staircase. So if we start at the bottom, when you're learning, you're probably going to learn sample statistics first and learn about what a sample is versus a population so that you can build from there. Once you've learned how to describe a sample in a population, then you start to see how different distributions work, the different population distributions. So the sample statistics help you understand those population distributions. From there, those population distributions and the sample statistics like mean or proportions help you to create and test hypotheses. Thinking back to science, we used to hypothesize different things and say that you were making an educated guess. And the same is true here in statistics. Except instead of an educated guess, we would kind of think about seeing if some change has happened. If something is different than it was before, that's where you begin to see if something is different than it was before. And to do that, we have methodology that we have to follow in order for the statistics to be true and us to have evidence of any change or difference. And that's what hypothesis testing is all about. But before you can even get to that staircase, it builds on the distributions and those build on the sample statistics. But confidence intervals and hypothesis testing are sort of partners. They could be equal level stairs, but we don't need two steps at the same level. But these two are sort of partners because when you have a confidence interval, it's talking about how confident you are in your results and how confident you are that the true value of a mean or a proportion or whatever you're working with is in what your interval is. So when you have that true value that you're looking at, anything outside that true value would be a difference. And that links back to the differences that were tested in hypothesis testing. So either way, if you learn confidence intervals first or hypothesis testing first, they both link together. And so you need those to build upon each other. So for this one, it not only builds on hypothesis testing, but hypothesis testing also builds on confidence intervals. And so learning them both is very important. Because our end goal here, our end goal is to be able to make inferences and conclusions. We want to know if we have evidence of a change. We want to know if we have evidence that something is different. We want to know what the averages are for our populations of all sorts of different types of examples and data. So when we are learning all of this information so that we can use it to speak about a group of data, a sample, or a population. And all of it builds like a staircase for us to be able to get to this point. But does it stop there? No. I had this little what's next in the clouds. And the clouds are representing the fact that this goes way, 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 way further. Introduction to statistics, an introductory piece of information of a very complicated subject is going to just cover the basics. And these basics are hard, they're not easy, they're hard, but that's because they are utilized in many, many, many more subjects. And so different things could be next. Looking at multiple hypotheses of 
a test, looking at multiple populations, multiple samples, and testing over and over and over again, um, testing them against each other, using a lot of interesting, more complex techniques to test for hypothesis and, co and confidence intervals. That's what you end up doing with statistics if you continue with the subject. But on a most basic level, you're learning how to make inferences and conclusions. And this is all used further if someone continues with it in their learning. And that's the first branch, the inferential branch that we were talking about. And then we have the predictive statistics branch. And there's more branches as well, but we're going to talk about predictive statistics now. So it all, again, starts with those descriptive statistics. We're still going to look at things like averages and graphs in order to understand that first and understand what an average is and what it tells you. But when we're starting to look at predicting, we're going to look at things that are linked together. We might have two different groups of data. Uh, and we want to know if they're connected, if there's some sort of change happening that happens in one and the other at the same time. And so that's called correlation, when we're trying to find a link between two groups that shows change and changing together, that's correlation. And then beyond that correlation, after we know something's correlated, we can say, well, if it's correlated, what can I do with it? And that's where linear regression comes into play. And linear regression allows us to start predicting. We can predict to see what's going to happen and we can use an equation to do it. We could see the change in the slope and we can see um, the y-intercept and what happens when things are zero. And you'll be learning all about this. And that regression lets us use the prediction if it's correlated. At the same time, we can link this right back to hypothesis testing from the other side. Because instead of just looking at correlation visually or looking at there, if there is a relationship between two groups in terms of um, what percent correlated they are, we can actually prove they're correlated with evidence if we do a hypothesis test. So if we've done a hypothesis test and we prove that it's correlated, that tells us, oh, that's a good way to predict. And we've gone through all these different checkpoints and making sure we understand if two groups are linked. Then we can start to really truly rely on our predictions and expand on our predictions and utilize the regression equation and other methods as well. So when we're looking at predictive statistics, it also has a stepping stone here that you have to um, grow and use each value in order for you to um, understand the final prediction. But again, there's a cloud up in the corner that says what's next, because we can do this with more than two variables. We can figure out if something is not just a linear regression, but maybe it is a curvilinear regression or something more complex. So all of these are the building blocks to some more complicated things as well. And you may not continue on with those more complicated things, but some people will. Either way, you can start to learn how these predictions are made. So I said start to learn. So that brings us to the why, because we've talked about what statistics is. We've talked about two different branches. But why do I need to learn this? Why, 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 why do I need to learn statistics? Why is this on my program evaluation? Why do I need to take this class? Why do I need to learn this? There's lots of reasons, tons and tons of different reasons, and everyone's going to have a different one. But I'm going to talk about a few. Critical thinking. We see statistics and data in every day of our lives, on the television, on social media, everywhere. And as you're going through this class, you're going to see lots and lots of different terminology that comes up when we're seeing this data in our lives. You'll see things like sample size, you'll see things like evidence, and you'll be able to then link it back to some of the different research papers you might see throughout different courses, to some of the things on social media, to some of the things on television where they're telling you all this information and you have to figure out, is this true? How do I know it's true? How do I know this test was valid and the way they did it was right and they used the correct sample size? Well. You're going to go through these different stats courses and you're going to think, 
Okay. It's just told me this is important to statistics and this is important to know and you'll be able to see it later. But even more than that, it'll help you just to see questions and think about how am I learning this? What am I missing here? You'll be able to learn to ask questions regarding statistics and critically think about how you're learning statistics and what you need to fully learn it. So it's about building those critical thinking skills, not just with statistics, but for yourself, for metacognition and letting yourself think about how you're learning and learn about how you learn so that you can process this new subject more easily. As you continue with different classes across multiple different genres, maybe you're in business, maybe you're in accounting, um, maybe you're in psychology, mental health, maybe you're in healthcare, maybe you're in math, maybe you're not. Whatever you might be working through, there's going to be research articles that you have to read. And some of them are going to have numbers and values that you need to understand. These values have specific names and symbols, and you'll be able to learn those names and symbols in this class. And it's good to be able to understand those research articles you're seeing to make sure that you understand if it's a good one to use as a backup resource or if it's a good one that um, will help you understand the topic at hand and whichever topic you might be covering. And lastly, statistics is in almost every career because it is a good way to prove something evidence-wise. It's not just about numbers. There's qualitative data too, and that means the quality descriptive data. Qualitative quality, that's a good way to remember it. Um, but it's descriptive data. It's like words, things that aren't necessarily measurements, but instead they could be ranks or um, scales of zero to 10 or words, like an IQ test type thing that wasn't scored numerically. So like those Myers-Briggs tests, that could be data. And whatever career you might be going into, healthcare, psychology, math, science, economics, business, there's going to be statistics that comes up. So it's important to be able to read the information that's current to your field of study. But also, if you're interested in ever running a research study yourself, that's where statistics comes into. So it's important in many, many different ways, and each of these ways will be different and more relevant to each of you. Every person is going to take something different from this course. So don't forget that even if you're not mastering every formula and every subject, there are things that you are learning along the way. And those skills are important, regardless of if you memorize the math and the formulas. The skills are important too. Congratulations. Thank you so much for watching Academic Support Guide on the what and why of statistics today. And please read the video description for further resources on statistics as well. Have a marvelous, marvelous day.